Once known as the Redwood of the East due to its immense size and height, the American chestnut today remains a fragment of its former self. Currently at the start, trailhead to the uh, Mingus Creek Trail. Got the Mingus Mill here. Pretty sick mill. Um, we're gonna be looking for the last American chestnut tree here. Um, pretty excited about it. We read through a random guidebook that a lady showed us at a campfire that there is a chestnut tree here. Um, 4.7 miles up the trail, so around 10 miles total. Um, we'll see. See how it goes. The Mingus Mill, built in 1886 and owned by the Mingus Floyd family, cost $600 back then, or rather $3 million adjusted for inflation. The mill itself was capable of generating 11 horsepower from the 22-foot plunge at the end of the 200-foot flume. The relished chestnut trees would frequently reach 100 feet in height and an incredible 10 feet in diameter. Not only were these trees renowned for their stature, but they also played a critical role in American culture at the time. Chestnut wood itself was rot resistant, straight grained, suitable for furniture, fencing, and building materials. Many Native American tribes, such as the Cherokee, viewed the chestnut as inextricable and would burn and clear their forests in order to create a more conducive habitat for their growth. However, in the early 1900s, tragedy struck when Oriental chestnuts were introduced to the United States from overseas for horticultural purposes. These Oriental trees carried with them a devastating blight that the American chestnuts had no evolutionary resilience to. In a matter of 40 years, the American chestnut's 40 million year existence vanished from the face of the earth. The new fungal disease would essentially girdle the tree's trunks and cut off the flow of nutrients to the tree above, thereby killing them. Despite the disease's monopolistic presence, the root systems of the chestnuts have managed to survive the blight thanks to the resilience of soil microorganisms against the blight. Each year, these root systems will desperately attempt to shoot up a new sprout only to eventually be killed off by the blight within a few years. Nowadays, the once redwoods of the east rarely grow even large enough to flower or bear fruit, with the luckiest trees usually obtaining trunks no larger than three inches. So, a little update we've been finding chestnut leaves all over the ground. However, they seem to be coming from, as of what we can find, little saplings, which, according to what I just read, are much more common than mature trees, and mature trees are the ones that are dying. Um, saplings are very prevalent, so. The one at the top of the six switchbacks that we're heading to after the rhododendron tunnel to the right, six to eight feet off trail. So our direction's in a half mile after the six switchback. It's supposed to be a mature tree. So hopefully, hopefully there's some truth. While sitting around a campfire on our last night camping in the Great Smoky Mountains, we met a lady who mentioned reading in a guidebook about the presence of a rare tree high up along the trail. After further questioning, we realized this tree was indeed an American chestnut, which the guidebook reported measuring eight inches in diameter. However, the tree was over five miles up a mountain trail and there were no direct GPS coordinates given to the location. Rather, the only information we had was exactly one half mile from the sixth switchback directly after a rhododendron tunnel and six to eight feet to the right of the trail. Armed with two arborists, we began our non excavatory hunt for the tree ascending nearly 3,000 feet to the ridge. This is the end of the rhododendron tunnel. Spills out through this area, six to eight feet off the trail to the right. We 
failed to locate her. Today, very few Americans even know of the tree that nearly defined the Eastern American landscape up to the 20th century. We sing about the delicious fruit of the tree in songs such as the Christmas song, but know not of the forgotten flavor. Though the situation does seem hopeless, there are a few people desperately attempting to revive the nearly extinct tree.